Hey friends, Ash here with Gent Sense with another fragrance review. Today I'm gonna to be taking a look at a fragrance that has grown on me a lot over the past couple of weeks or so. This fragrance, Roberto Cavalli Womo La Notte. Again, if I'm saying that incorrectly, just overlook that. I did a first impression on this fragrance. I really liked it at the time, but I've actually grown to like it more and more and more since I did that first impression. It actually reminds me of a couple of other fragrances that at one point in time were really hyped as big compliment getters or big date night fragrances. This one actually fits right in line with a couple of those fragrances, which I'll mention later on in the video. I actually bought this one as a tester, so the presentation isn't going to be as in-depth as usual, but I'm gonna break this fragrance down, let you know what I think about it, and let you know why I like it so much. So let's jump into this. Like I said, guys, I bought this one as a tester, so no box, just the bottle to look at today. Though, if you're interested in how that box looks, it looks like that, right there. That's a great presentation part of a video, isn't it? Let's go ahead and look at the bottle. So here it is, it's in your typical Roberto Cavalli Womo bottle style, only this one has a deep blue coloration. The cap does click into place, there's nothing on top of the cap. It's got this kind of alligator skin pattern on either side of the bottle, and on the bottom is your sticker with batch code. The atomizer on this one is pretty good, I'll go ahead and give it a spray for you guys out there or two sprays, I guess. This one opens up with a touch of bergamot and a little bit of lavender. It comes across more clearly on a tester strip or in the air than it does off your skin. Off your skin, the bergamot and lavender aren't as pronounced. They're there, you can pick them up. They're just not really strong. Even early on, this fragrance is more so about the spices and the leather. It has an aromatic feel to it. It's got a good amount of sweetness, though initially that sweetness isn't as apparent. But the longer this stays on your skin, the sweeter that it gets. That being said, this never becomes a sugary sweet kind of fragrance. It's not a sweet tooth kind of scent. Like I said just now, it concentrates more on being a, a sexy leather fragrance. The spices work together really well with that, and one of the main spices that you're gonna pick up with this one is cardamom. And the cardamom here is done very well. It's a mass appealing take on cardamom, not the same as La Nuit de Lome. That's not one of the fragrances that I'm gonna compare this one to. But the way cardamom is used there as a really attractive, attention-grabbing kind of note, you're gonna get the same effect from the cardamom in here. Though ultimately the cardamom in this fragrance is gonna be playing second fiddle overall to that leather. So that spicy sweet cardamom, you pick that up early on and that's going to linger throughout the life of this fragrance. You also pick up a bit of clary sage early on and that lends uh, just a little bit of herbaceousness, but it kind of plays as a second layer or a second fiddle to that cardamom, kind of sits in underneath it and just adds a little more depth to the scent. You also pick up a little touch of black pepper, which adds further nuance to the spiciness of this fragrance, but the black pepper is not very strong. The cardamom definitely overwhelms the black pepper. There's not an enormous change in this fragrance from the mid into the dry down. Does it change a little bit? Yes. As it dries down, it gets a little sweeter, like I talked about, but it's not a monumental change. Like I said a little bit ago, this is mainly about that leather and the cardamom and things that work in with those notes. It's like that early on, like that through the mid, and like that into the dry down. Once it dries down, it's a very, very pleasant, slightly spicy and sweet leather fragrance. And that leather smells very similar to something that you might find in a Carolina Herrera fragrance. Something like CH Men or CH Privé. To me, this fragrance almost smells like something that you would slot in between these two fragrances. Basically, if this had been released by Carolina Herrera as a new CH Men flanker, it wouldn't surprise me or would not have surprised me, I should say. Because those two fragrances, CH Min and CH Privé, were the first fragrances that came to my mind the more I gave wear to La Note. La Note. It's not a clone of CH Min and it's not a clone of CH Privé, it's just the way the leather is used in this fragrance. The leather here comes across very similarly to the way it's used in these scents. It's a sweet, sexy, spiced, soft leather. It's not a super manly, rugged, earthy, dirty leather. Absolutely none of that. This is that sweet, sexy take on the note that works so well 
for nighttime fragrances and date night fragrances. To me, this is closer to CH Privé than it is to CH Men. When you smell these side by side, there are definite similarities that you can pick up on very easily. Both of those fragrances share some of the main notes in them. Leather, Tonka, Cardamom, Lavender, both of these have those notes. Of course, the Roberto Cavalli does not have whiskey or woods, but off my skin, it actually works out better because of that. CH Privé is a great fragrance. I own it, obviously. I think it smells really nice. It's easy to wear, big compliment getter, but it can come across a little bit sharp at times. This one, the Cavalli, actually comes off a little bit smoother, deeper, and more refined. Obviously, our mileage may vary here. You may not like this one as much as I do, but I can tell you that I really, really enjoy it. And that at this point, I will wear this over CH Men or CH Privé pretty much every time. It's not hyper unique because the way the leather is used here has been done before, but it smells really, really nice. In the full dry down, this fragrance does have a good amount of sweetness, which is gonna be coming from the Tonka in the base of the fragrance. But the Tonka here is not overwhelming. The Tonka works in really nicely with the cardamom, which really elevates that kind of spicy sweet feeling that works along with the leather so well. And that Tonka just gives it a nice warm touch. There's also a touch of patchouli in the base, but it's not very strong. You might pick up the tiniest touch of patchouli in the base there, but this one is mainly gonna be Tonka, leather, and cardamom. Another thing about this fragrance that I really like, my wife loves this fragrance. So it's not just me that really enjoys it, it's her as well and her friends. I've actually had her blind smell this, so not knowing what I'm wearing, up against CH Men, CH Privé, the new scent, Absolute, by Hugo Boss, Tiffany in Love, and also Valentino Uomo, Born in Roma. So I've had her smell this in direct competition, if you wanna call it that, up against five other fragrances. And each one of those five fragrances is a potential compliment getting fragrance. It's not like I'm having this go up against trash fragrances. And no lie, every single time, not even knowing what's on which hand, she's picked this one. I've also worn this to gatherings with friends and it's done really well there too. To date, I've not had a single person say anything negative about this fragrance. Now I know it sounds like I'm hyping this up and everything and I'm not trying to make this the new hype train or something ridiculous like that. I'm just telling you guys, this has really grown on me and in my opinion at this point in my collection, this fragrance has basically replaced these two. Now I know that would have mattered more years ago when these were getting hyped up, but either way, these are solid fragrances. It's just I like this one more. Again, not the exact same as either one of those, but is it in the same vein, same style of fragrance? Can you draw comparisons between these three pretty easily? Yes. And I'm also not trying to say that this is the new compliment beast or whatever, but for me, compliment wise, it's done very well. And that's all I can ask for. Like I talked about earlier, this one's gonna be more of a nighttime fragrance, more of a date night kind of fragrance. It's gonna be more of a cool weather kind of fragrance. So more fall and winter, though you could wear it in spring as well, as long as it's not really hot outside, you know, as it starts to transition into summertime. Like with all fragrances though, if you really like the scent, you can wear it during the day and you can wear it during the summer if you want. It's just for me personally, those are the best times to wear it in my opinion, fall, winter, nighttime. It's actually because of this fragrance that I bought Roberto Cavalli Deep Desire because this one has impressed me so much and has grown on me so much. At this point, I'm kind of wanting to pick up everything from the line just to make sure I don't miss something awesome. Performance wise, it's about average for me. Longevity is actually really solid. I get seven plus hours in terms of longevity Longevity, so no issues there whatsoever. In terms of projection, it's best for the first hour or so. It's very solid initially. After that, it starts to sit a little bit closer to the skin. It's not like it becomes a skin scent after that first hour. It's just that's when you start to notice it weakening up. So that's another thing that it has in common with these two. Not fantastic performance. Though, like I said, I consider it in the average range. So not too bad, just not great. I've actually been looking for this fragrance at discounters, hoping that it would pop up there for a good price. But as of now, it's not really out there. At least at places like FragranceNet or FragranceX. I actually bought mine off eBay, like I said, as a tester. I believe it was right under $50, which is a good price in my opinion for the quality of the scent. So if you're interested in the fragrance, you could go my route and get it off eBay or wait a little bit and once it shows up on FragranceNet, FragranceX, or your discounter of choice, pick it up then. In my opinion, if you like these fragrances, I would be very surprised 
if you did not like this fragrance. Using that same logic though, if you hate these fragrances, this one may not be something you like. I can tell you guys though, beyond a shadow of a doubt, if I owned this fragrance when I made my top 10 designer list for fall of this year, this would have been on that list. I'm not sure where I would have put it, but it would have made the list. It's not a really complicated fragrance. It's not a fragrance that's necessarily super unique, but it smells nice, lasts for a good amount of time, and gets the job done. Like I said, I enjoy the way it smells. Everybody around me has said that they love the way it smells. Very solid fragrance. Really happy I picked this one up. All right, guys, that's gonna do it for my thoughts on Cavalli Uomo La Notte. If you've smelled this one, let me know in the comments below what you think about it. As always, thanks so much for hanging out with me today. Thanks for all your support. I'll see you guys again tomorrow with another fragrance video. See you guys.